started the course uh, 20 years ago. Hugh and I did most of the uh, lectures ourselves, and as the course grew in popularity and the word got out about, uh, about the content of the course, we were able to invite more and more faculty from across the country and, and get very specific experts uh, in their fields to, to bring us up to date on the new developments in melanoma. Uh, the course has evolved as the knowledge base has evolved, and the knowledge base of melanoma that we have now is substantially different than it was 20 years ago. And so we've tried to reflect the content of the course uh, to, to keep up with the latest developments. I think that we believe that and would hope that eventually no one would die of melanoma. And that was true 20 years ago, and I think it's true today. Uh, but melanoma is a systemic disease, and I think it's been important that we've been able to involve a number of specialists uh, in multidisciplinary areas that contribute to the course, and that has increased over the last 20 years as our knowledge uh, and change in education has come about. Looking back over these past two decades, uh, are there two or three developments? in the advancement of melanoma treatment that you'd like to speak to? Well, I think certainly one of the key ones has been Sentinel notes uh, and its use primarily as a diagnostic tool and certainly one can draw conclusions out of that, but that has been a tremendous advance. Uh, it has included a number of uh, providers, of the general surgeons play more important role in melanoma related to that and has <clears throat> brought forth the concept again that melanoma requires a team concept. And the other big development, I think, has been understanding what's required for melanoma prevention and who's at risk for melanoma. Uh, sun exposure, tanning bed uh, exposure, and the detriment that that is, uh, as well as the, the whole dysplastic nevus syndrome, familial melanoma, and the importance that those patients uh, have in terms of uh, seeking regular dermatologic care and follow-up. It allows us to make the diagnosis earlier and treat patients at an earlier stage and therefore have a better cure rate than we might have had in the past. There's another group of people that we're training now that did not exist in a large numbers 20 years ago, and that's our ancillary providers in terms of our physician's assistant, nurse practitioners, uh, in terms of their contribution under, of course, dermatologist and appropriate physician guidance in the area of melanoma. And I think the staging system, too, especially on the pathology side. That's right. We have a uh, a much better understanding of, and much better statistics and data on which to base prognosis and, and guide treatment than we had 20 years ago. Could I ask you both to comment briefly on what you envision for the next 20 years in the field of melanoma treatment? Well, I think certainly there's going to be a continued increase of awareness. We just see from the statistics that melanoma, both incidence continues to grow, our prognosis is better, but we've seen a decline in the rate of other cancers perhaps, uh, but an increase continued in melanoma. And, uh, I'm afraid that's going to continue for a few more years. And in terms of diagnosis of melanoma, the whole area of uh, molecular pathology, genomics, the understanding of the genome and how it relates to the uh, evolution and development of melanoma is, is we're just on the, the beginning of understanding in that whole area, and I think in the next decade, we're going to see an explosion of knowledge uh, as it relates to molecular pathology and, and genetic, uh, uh, the genetic understanding of the disease. And I think that when we started, we had chemotherapy. Within the last 20 years, biotherapy has come along, and I think we're going to see genetic therapy play a tremendous role.